Hello, this is Craig from bizbox.co.uk. In this video, I'm going to look through Codex Tau Empire. So this is a brand new Tau Codex. And um, there's not massive changes um, since the last edition, but there's new units and new formations. So I'm going to look through the book page by page, as I always do. Um, I won't focus too heavily on rules or points values, etc. But we will probably take a closer look at the formations themselves and the detachment. So uh, we'll start with the front cover. Um, out of all the new sort of hardback covers, this is probably one of my least favourites. Um, maybe it's because I'm not a massive Tau fan, but it's still nice. But um, some of them sort of catch your eye a bit better. Um, the new um, Seraphon book for Age of Sigma, for example, just looks really nice. Whereas this, you know, it's a Tau codex, it looks alright. Anyway, let's not go into too much detail on that. I'm sure there's many people who probably disagree. So as always, we just have a sort of two-colour um, piece of artwork. And then the main web page. So we, of course we have a table of contents. And with all um, GW books, some high quality shots of miniatures. And you'll see that throughout this codex, of course. So we have some fluff and some nice artwork. Some more fluff about the tower cast themselves. I actually quite like this piece of artwork here. That's quite nice. Very old piece of tower artwork, if I'm not mistaken, um, possibly used on one of the old codexes. We do see some of the old codex um, covers appear in the new books, just as artwork. But I really like this, showing the different size levels between all the different types of um, battle suits. And it's cool starting with a fire warrior, going up to the stealth suits, the closer suits, the um, XV85 enforcers, which I think are the commanders. And you've got the broadside and the riptide. Of course, as we know, it goes one bigger than that with a supremacy suit. And we have some artwork of the crew, which I think is an old piece. And a little bit about Commander Farsight. So we have a town military structure. Now, to, for example, the fire cast have fire warriors, pathfinders, battle suits, and ballistic suit pilots. Terrestrial vehicle pilot, they're all part of the fire cast. And of course, the air cast will have the Sun Shark, Race the Shark, and all the other spacecraft pilots. So, I won't go into um, too much detail about all these, but you can see there's different types um, of units making up different sort of army formations. Now, of course, as always, there'll be a um, galactic map showing all the different um, worlds, planets. These are all the tower ones. And there's a little bit of information, fluff about each one. So then we go into the individual units fluff. So we have commanders and ethereals, fire blades and fire warriors, and pathfinders and drones. Quite like all the different types of drones there in the artwork. That's quite cool. A little bit about different types of gunships and the piranhas. There's crisis battlesuits and broadsides. Quite like that piece of artwork there. I think that's, that's a new piece that looks quite cool. I quite like the tie car scheme. I like the grey and the blue, the orange. And the same as stealth. So I think that's quite a cool scheme as well. So the XV95 Ghost Kill, which is which is new, so there's a little bit about that. Now we've got Riptide and Storm Surges. A bit about the air cast. Um, interesting bit about the um, alien auxiliaries. Um, as we see more and more tower units, I'm sure eventually these might end up being their own codex. I would like to see a proper Crew Codex come out. Don't have to be massive, just sort of like Harlequin size thing, but I think we're getting to a point now where these just seem not irrelevant to a Tau army, but they just don't seem seem to fit in like they 
used to, in my opinion. Now, I don't think we'll see Crew or Vespids a lot in people's armies anyway. But of course, you know, Tau do use their mercenaries, so it does sort of fit their fluff, but I don't know, I, I, I hope we'd see like a supplement or something for them, because they don't really get a lot of love these days. So yeah, for special characters, um, Farsight, Shadow Sun, oh, that's it for this section, okay. So I know this is just a timeline, um, different wars, etc. for Tau, so this is another common thing you'll see in a lot of codexes. And then we have these lovely pieces of artwork, the very um, bland, cartoonish pieces of artwork we've seen in other codexes, like Necron for example. Um, very basic, just pieces of artwork showing different colour schemes. Um, a lot of people think they're a bit silly because it's like you have some fantastic artwork for these books and then these just, you know, don't quite match it. But you know, they do a job, they show the colour schemes. But... Yeah, very basic compared to what you see in the rest of the book. So, quite a few pages of this just showing off the different units. Uh, yeah, I mean the Vespids there and the crew, they just make it look silly, don't they? Look at that crew hound. You know, I don't know why GW have these sort of pages. I know they want to show off card schemes, but they could put a bit more effort into these, maybe. Yeah, that crew just looks silly. Not saying I could draw any better, of course, but I know um, a lot of that that GW certainly can. Then we have a different, all different card schemes here, so. And another page giving you all the um, different colour schemes for different um, tire steps you could have. It's quite cool. Um, instead of these, I would actually prefer to see miniatures painted up in these colour schemes. I think that would be quite a good idea for GW to do. But, you know, they probably turn these out so quick. You know, you just have a blank um, template you just use for fill tool on Microsoft Paint you could um, churn these out with. But, yeah, it gives um, people ideas for different colour schemes. I always like to try and paint my miniatures sort of different to how GW do. And then we just have um, a few more pages of our miniatures. Again, very high quality photos showing off the miniatures. Have a little heavy metal section. Again, just more high quality pictures of miniatures. Okay, so now we move on to their detachment. So. This, of course, is made up of different formations, and we'll have a look at them soon. I will just go through the command benefits. So, as always, um, you can re-roll the result on the Warlord Traits table. That's pretty standard these days. So, whenever a unit from the Hunter Contingent, that's um, the name of this um, detachment I probably should have mentioned. Whenever a unit from a Hunter Contingent selects a target in the shooting phase, any number of other units from the same detachment who can still shoot can add their firepower to the attack. These units must shoot the same target, resolving their shots as if they were a single unit. This includes the use of mark light abilities. When three or more units combine their firepower, the firing models add one to their ballistic skill. So that's quite nice, um, especially with other mark light abilities and having their plus one ballistic skill. So. Um, do apologise about my iPad going off there. So that's quite nice. Um, it's not massively overpowered, but for an army that's quite shooty, it, you know, it will make them even stronger in that regard. So now we've got the pages with the war gear and a little bit about the data sheets. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll go through. Um, Individual units, I'm not going to go through the rules or anything, so we just have a commander and Imperial. And there's commander Farsight and Shadow Sun. And Unshi and Unva. 
I'm not pronouncing these right. Then we have the Fireblade himself and Dark Strider. So they're all your um, HQ units. Um, as I'm not a tag player, I really, I'm not going to go into too much um, detail about anything because I don't really um, know which options are good or bad and what um, people prefer to use. Um, so we have the Fire Warriors now, they're now split into Strike Teams and Breacher Teams. Um, as you know with your new kit you can now make two different types of Fire Warriors, uh, they can have different types of weapons. And then of course the crew are still there in the troop section. So moving on to the Elite, we have the Stealth Suits, who um, are now on bigger bases. And uh, of course your Crisis Suits, your Crisis Bodyguards as well. Um, I'm guessing they could maybe take more weapon options. I'm only guessing because, as I said, I'm not really a, a tire player. And the Ghost Keel's in there. As well as the Riptide, which is quite interesting. Um, I don't know if he was, to, if he was Elite before. It's funny that um, with the new suit coming out, that he's in the Lord of War section and not the um, and not the um, Riptide as well. Because obviously, you know, he's, all right, he's not quite um, um, a Wraith Knight ability, but he's still quite a big, a big um, suit. Um, anyway, we have drones as well. Um, we typically see drone squads a lot these days. There's also piranhas. And your Pathfinders, and of course the Devilfish, and the Sun Shark and Razor Shark um, aircraft, as well as the Vespid. Um, just I, I I don't like Vespids at all. I just think they're silly looking models. Um, I don't know. Sort of a, for an army like Tau, sort of sit back and shoot things, having a sort of a jump. Infantry units a bit silly, but you know, GW like to cover different bases when it comes to armies. And uh, sniper drones, and then we have the hammerhead and the sky ray and the broadside battle suit, which is something I am a big fan of. I do love the broadside. And I love the model they have now. And then lastly, the Lord of War is the new Storm Surge suit. So yeah, he's um he is a lot bigger than the um, the Riptide, so he does definitely deserve a Lord of War slot. Um, he's, he's also a gargantuan creature. Um, again, I'm not going to go into his rules. I'm sure you can find them on the internet. What I am going to look at are the different are the different types of um, formations. Okay, so this is the Hunter Cad Cadre, or was it Cadre? I'm not even gonna... My pronunciation is terrible on most things. Okay, so um, in this formation you can have a Commander, and then 0 to 1 Fireblade, 0 to 1 Crisis Suit Bodyguards, then 3 to 6 of the following, a Breacher Team, a Strike Team, or Crew Carnival, so basically 3 to 6 of any troop choice. Then one to three of the Stealth, Crisis, Ghost Keel, and Riptide battle suits. So basically one to three um, elites, and there is a pattern. Uh, one to three path, Pathfinder, Piranhas, Vespids, or Drones, and one to three Broadsides, Hammerheads, Storm Surges, and Sniper Drones. So basically, sort of a standard Force Org in a way if you take out the Flyers and the Lord of War. So basically, your compulsory is three troops, um, and then one HQ elites, fast attack and heavy. So what they can do, they can use the support and fire rule um, within 12 inches rather than six. Um, that's basically um, the Overwatch thing, where more than one unit can Overwatch. And then units from this formation within 12 inches of the uh, commander or fire blade can run. Or move flat out and then shoot in the shooting phase, which which is quite nice. Uh, it makes Tau a little bit more mobile. 
because obviously they're not the most um, mobile army unless you came um, um, via battle suits, of course, like the crisis suits and that. So, you know, if you're playing objectives and you're fire warriors or pathfinders, etc., well, and move about a bit more and sort of shoot, that's quite nice. So you've got the Retaliation, uh, which is Commander, and then three Crisis Battle Suits, Broadside and Riptide, and uh, no, one Broadside and one Riptide. So basically your Battle Suits. And um, with all the units from formation start in reserve, you can announce before the battle begins that they will use a low altitude deployment. If you do so, deploy the entire formation using a deep strike special rule at the start of your second turn. So that's quite nice if you just want to drop in a load of battle suits and just um, shoot the enemy at closer range, that's quite nice. And they will all add one to their ballistic skill during the turn they arrive from deep strike also. So yeah, that's quite a deadly second turn as long as you don't mishap. And then you've got the heavy version of this, which is um, one Ghost Keel and two Storm Surges. Um, as long as they're within, as long as the Storm Surges are within 12 inches of a Ghost Keel, they can reroll all fail to hit rolls for shooting attacks, which is quite nasty. And if an enemy unit is chosen as the target by at least two units from this formation in the same shooting phase, that unit cannot run or move flat out in their next turn. In addition, such units must have the result of any charge rolls they make. Uh, almost half the result, sorry, of any charge rolls they make in the next turn. So, you know, this is quite a heavy um, retribution um, cadre. It's, it's quite nasty, actually. Um, the units themselves are quite good on their own, so, but having them together... Of course, GW are going to have to make the most expensive stuff together quite good to get people to buy them. But why not? So, we have the infilt infiltration um, cadre now. Which is three units of Pathfinders, two stealth battle suits, or two units of stealth battle suits, and a piranha. Of course, I am, there's always a tax for these things, and I think the piranha is probably the tax in this one, but you know, it's a good little tactic by GW to get sales. So, if a unit from this formation is completely destroyed, you can activate the formation's intervention request beacons. If you do so, all units you have remain in reserve at the start of your next turn. Oh, all units, sorry, all units you have remaining in reserve at the start of your next turn. And will just arrive. So, yeah, it's quite good. If you've got stuff um, away in reserve. Um, if a unit from this formation inflicts three or more mark light hits on a target in a, sh in a shooting phase, inflict a single seeker missile hit on the enemy unit in addition to placing the mark light cameras. You do not need to roll to hit for a secret missile, nor do you need to have a unit capable of firing a missile in range of the target. Uh, so the missiles are essentially fired by support craft flying high above the battlefield, so that's quite nice just to have an extra secret missile hit there, but it's not too bad, but not brilliant either, but yeah, it's better than nothing. Then we have this, um, your stealth unit, so two units of stealth battle suits and a ghost keel. So at the start of your shooting phase, this formation can network their stealth fields to create a wall of mirrors. If you do so, then the weapon used by the formation's ghost kills, and any unit of stealth battle suits from the formation that are within 6 inches of a ghost kill from this formation have ignores cover special rule. And these models add 1 to their ballistic skill for that shooting phase. In addition, their weapons are assumed to strike the rear armour of any vehicle they hit, no matter what its actual face on. So that's quite nice. That is very nice. So yeah, I quite like that one. Um, certainly use that one over this one if I was a tarot player. So the ghost, just um, the ghost kill now in a couple of really good formations. So we have a fire base support, which is two units of broadsides and a riptide. So instead of firing independently in the shooting phase, all units in the fire base su support can participate in a coordinated firestorm. I like the sound of that. When they do so, all models from this formation must shoot the same target, resolving their shots as if they were a single unit. This includes the use of Mark Light abilities. However, when resolving a shooting attack, all firing models 
have the tank hunter and monster hunter special at all. So handy if you're going after uh, some big vehicles or monsters. But that's, that's, all, that's all they have, so not overly exciting there. Especially as all everything got fire at that one target. And you think with the firepower they have, they probably don't even need that ability, but it might be nicer for the bigger, bigger things, I suppose. So now we have um, a formation that has three hammerheads and a sky ray. So they have interlaced predictive targeting, which is pick a point anywhere on the battlefield at the start of your shooting phase. The point you pick is the center of this formation's predictive targeting grid. You can reroll all failed hit rolls for attacks made by models from this formation if the target unit is within six inches of the point you picked. Not too bad, but I can't see there being like a lot of units within that six inches. Um, it depends. I suppose it really depends um, on what sort of missions you're playing and what sort of armies you're playing. Um, if it says target unit of in six, does that mean just one model or the whole unit? Um, I don't, I'm not really sure on that one, but I'm guessing maybe just you probably just need to have at least one model within six inches. So if you're playing the armies all sort of bunched together, that could be quite handy. But, but you know, it's one of them things that really depend. So you could end up just having that against one unit, but again, that's still better than nothing. So this is um, the air support. So a sun shark bomber and two razor sharks. So you can probably see from that which ones um, is more popular. <laughs> so um, roll a dice if, if a crew shaken or stunned result is inflicted on a model from this formation. On a two to six, that is ignored and has no effect. But of course they still lose their um, hull point as normal. So yeah, that's not too bad. Roll a dice at the start of your turn for each whole point lost by models from this formation. On a roll of six, the whole point is restored. So, um, if you're using if you're using flyers and you want to use at least three of them, then certainly use this formation um, because it's quite handy. It'll make them a little bit more survivable. Um, but I really don't know anyone who really used one, let alone three. But there you go. Okay, an allied advanced um, cadre. Which is four units of crew and two units of vespids, so that's a lot of that's a lot of models. I won't say points because I don't think they're too expensive, but it's still a big chunk of your army to put on the alloyed um, units. However, if you do plan to use them, the vespid stingwing units from this formation have infiltrate and stealth um, brackets forests, so maybe they only get that in forests. Um, haven't really seen that before. Um, that might something like that might be about, but. I don't know. Um, strategic intel. Crew carnivore units from this formation. That within 12 inches of a Vespid Stingwing unit from this formation. Replace their stealth forests with shrouded forests. Special rule. And add one to their blister skill. Fair enough. And then units from this formation have the support and fire special rule. But it can only provide support and fire to other units from their formation. So that's quite nice. Um, but is it enough to really take all that crew and Vespids? Probably not. But you know, it's nice that they do get some sort of formation. So that's the formations, um, and lastly we have um, some nice artwork. And then the appendix. So we have all our traits. Um, I don't know if these are different from the old ones, but I'll just quickly go through them. So enemy models cannot take lookout sir rolls against your warlord shooting attacks, and if he has no um, range weapons, you can re-roll the result. Okay, it's not too bad. Um, one use only, declare your warlord Your warlord is shooting this ability at the start of one of your shooting phases. For a duration of a phase, all friendly units with a talent by a faction within 12 inches of a warlord re-roll hit rolls of one. That's quite nice. The warlord and his unit move 3d6 when making jetpack thrust moves. Um, if your warlord is not jetpack infantry, re-roll this result. I like that they tell you to re-roll results if it's not applicable. Um, there's some instances in in the Marvel world um, traits I've rolled for in the past or I haven't applied and they don't give you that um, option. But of course I'm if you 
use um, combined arms or whatever, you normally get to reroll anyway. So um, one use only, declare your warlord is using this ability at the start of one of your movement phases. All friendly units with Tower Empire faction on the battlefield that have gone to ground are no longer considered gone to ground and they can move, shoot and charge normally this turn. So that's that's not too bad. Um, yeah, that could come in handy. It's one of them things what, you know, it could be really useful in a game or just could never come up. But, you know, it's not too bad. Uh, a lot of these seem to be one use only because the next one is declare your warlord is using this Ability at the start of one of the shooting phases. For that phase, the Warlord and his unit have Skyfire special rule. So again, another one of these things that's sort of circumstantial, but you know that could be really handy um, for one turn. And then lastly, your Warlord and any unit he joins does not scatter when arriving by Deep Strike. And again, if your Warlord cannot Deep Strike, we will result. So actually, they're not they're not too bad Warlord traits. Sometimes you look at Warlord traits and I think they're just useless, or you just you know, if, if you've forgotten, it wouldn't matter. At least there's nothing that causes fear, for example. It's just stupid. So yeah, actually, um, their Warlord traits are pretty decent. So um, let me go into the melee and ranged weapons. I won't go into any details on these, but uh, most of them are they're all exactly the same as before, plus some um, additional weapons for new units. And then there's a whole bit here about drones, what all the different types of drones do. So that's quite cool. as well. And then we have support system, so a bit essentially um, war gear. And the vehicle upgrades. And then we have signature systems. These are basically your relics. And then we have tactical objectives. And then that, apart from just a summary of all the stats and weapon profiles, is that. And again we end up I think the same piece of artwork as we started. So, longer video than normal, but I did want to go through the formations and that to look at them because um, I really haven't looked at them in great detail, so I want to read them anyway. And I do apologise, my iPad just keeps going off. I should have muted it, but I didn't want to get up halfway through the video. Um, it's not really too much of a pain, really. Um, so, yeah, Codex Tower Empire. Um, not a lot has changed. Um, I've read online that if you have this, then you can use that with the old tag codex because all the new stuff is in here. Um, I don't know if there's minor tweaks or not in here, but doesn't matter. You will notice that the tide wall rampart is not in here, which I thought was a bit strange, but it is in here, and I will be going through both books, and um, there's fluff and rules, to um, the k -on book. I will be going through that in another video which I'm hoping to go up this week, so look out for that. And we will look at the Tide Wall Rampart in a bit more detail in that book. So, all that's left to say is um, please like and, subs and subscribe. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I shall see you again.